Well, how, how do you guys, how well do you guys know your pork cuts? <laughs> I don't know my pork cuts very well. We're going to try pork collar steaks. We don't even know what that is. Uh, we got the expert right here. Charlie Torgerson is the executive chef and the owner of Charlie T's Foods and RC Barbecue. He's got a giant pork but wow, this is some junk in the trunk on this little piggy. <laughs> Brings all the boys to the yard. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it really does. does. Oh Beautiful, my gosh. isn't it? This is amazing. You've got to tell us about this. And then you're making these pork collar steaks. And what is that? Well, here's here's what I'm going to show you where that comes from. All right, so this get is after a, this, it. I'm sorry. No, you're There's good. There's a pork butt right here. So if you see this blade bone right here, yeah. that collar, which I took out, is right there. It's also called a copa or capicola. So if you buy oh, capicola, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. this is the only muscle you can use if they make capicola. Oh my gosh, I oh. never knew that. So if you make capicola ham, yeah. that means they're grabbing other parts from the hog. Oh. If it oh. says ham on it. Oh, but if, if it, it says, says ca capicola. Yeah, so there's a couple ways you can do this, mm -hmm. harvest it. You can just take that and go straight down like that. Okay. And that's the easy way, and that's yep. also called maybe a CT butt. I'm gonna kinda, I'm gonna actually kinda do this and go <laughs> and kind of roll it out of there. You know, anytime anything says the word butt, Ben laughs. I like, know, he can't I mean, handle well, it. But <laughs> I want to clarify, this is not actually a part of the butt. It's a shoulder. No, it's, it's the a shoulder, shoulder, right? Yeah. So, the, so silly. it comes from back in the colon days where they used to pack these into barrels, and those barrels were actually called butts. Oh. That's where it comes from, out in the colony days. Okay. So okay. That's, that's, your, that's your copa or your collar. This actually, it comes... Pretty much, if pretend I'm a hog, it actually is attached to the loin. So okay. last time I was here, I did a loin, yeah. Yeah. and then it extends right into there. And the beautiful thing about this is there's that beautiful internal. Oh my gosh. Oh, a little beautiful. cross section, huh? Yeah. yeah. Fat. So that's what makes that little cut of meat on this side yeah. different than like this side. Yeah, so this will be more tender, which you can take it to 145, like I'm doing over there. When you get into over here, you want to take it past that into the 195 to 200, so it tenderizes. Okay, but Charlie, you're a chef. Like, you know how to butcher a pig. Do you, can we do this, or do you need yeah. to ask your butcher to do this? No, for you? you could, again, you could it's, put this back together. You could come in here like this, <laughs> yeah. and you could just go straight down and uh, not have to roll it, don't roll it out like I do. Okay. And then you can get it, it's pretty much a CT butt at that point. Okay. And a bigger collar. When I did a, I did a Korean barbecued pork collar at the fair back in 2015. Yeah. So I did this. I bought these, cut that, smoked that to about 175, then rolled it around with a Korean barbecue sauce. So good. And then slice it into thin, mm. kind of buttery tender. You don't want it to fall apart. You want to have it in medallions. Okay. Okay. So the beautiful thing is this is an expensive cut. You can turn this around, especially for restaurant people. Turn this around, cut it into big medallions, charge a little bit more. Okay, got gotcha. you. So then what do you have over here? These those are the, are the collars. collars. So those are the collars. So that's yep. when you slice that's, that into steaks. That's and this section right here What did you cook sliced. in there? So I, I took a little, this is like salt, sugar, paprika, a little bit of my rub, espresso, and this is yellow mustard and molasses, and I just rubbed it on there. Whoa. And you can see I'm just starting to get some of that juice out of there. Yeah. So that yeah. one looks Look perfect. Look how tender that looks. Yeah, so you, you know, some are going to be more tender than others. If you harvest it like I did and rolled it out of there, you're going to get more tender. If you leave a little bit of that on, that's when it can get a little bouncy and chewy. Okay. Because you oh, have more okay. of that blade meat in there. Okay. okay. And then how, how you cook it? How long are you cooking this? Like, what is I the... probably started this when I got here about 20 minutes ago. Okay. I forgot to turn the, oven, the thing on for the yeah. first. So it was kind of like, I'm like, I don't hear anything. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta turn it on, Charlie. Turn See, it on. that's good though. That, yeah. Even chefs make mistakes. Yeah, you know. But do you feel like this is a little bit of like beginning butchery that you could start to do? Yeah, this? you could play around with it. And it, what's cool is that then you can take this piece of meat. Yeah. And I smoked it till about. I only took it to about 180. Okay. And then I took it and made some chili out of it, Great. and then finished it in the chili. Oh. So now I have two okay. different dishes going with about a really inexpensive piece of meat that you can buy yeah. anywhere, like Cobb, Costco, or whatever. You know? So one, so 180 to that. So 180 on its own is probably not not quite done. No, not 180 wouldn't be like for pulled pork. Right. Yeah. I would take it to about 200 to 205 for pulled pork, but yeah. I wanted to kind of finish and start tenderizing in my in your chili. Liquid. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're going to make some sliders pulled pork, take it farther, wrap it if you want. Pull it, all that. Oh, but I love this idea because then you've got one big cut, you have multiple different meals, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you've got a little bit of a more reasonable amount of like your pork that right. you would shred versus, because if you did take that further, you know, sometimes you end up with so much pulled pork, you're like, right. what am I doing with this? Yeah, so yeah, obviously that's a nice small, that's about three pounds finished with the bone. Yeah. And that's, it was a little bit smaller one than this one I started with. This one would finish a little bit bigger. That is giant. Yeah, I took, I I did that's, that. that's a yeah, big piece that's of meat. That's like yeah. a Flintstone. Yeah, thing. and you can see All how right. beautiful that looks. That's but so here's, good. And then, of course, you got to make some bacon and 
cornbread. Well, the cornbread looks yeah. Yeah. Like, delicious. We try this. Yeah, yeah, we gotta try everything. All right, let's here. slice this up. I want to see what's oh, happening. Look so at, nice and and then you know penny. us. We just eat it right off the cutting board. That's yeah, what we yeah, do. We don't, have to, we don't have to play around here. No, we can. You're going to get some internal fat in there, but that's where all the flavor is. Oh, here's a fork. Are you going to use your fingers? Or just I don't. I'm just not sure how hot it is. I don't want to like. It's not. It's okay. 145. Well, look how beautiful that that inside is, you guys. I mean, it is. It is nice and pink. Mm -hmm. And that's how it should be, rosy pink yeah. to 185. Oh. And that's how a beautiful piece of meat like that. I love the mustard flavor with it. Like, I could smell the mustard yeah. yep, happening. Yep, yep. And then that's, so you put that on first and then you put the rub Yeah, on. it helps the rub adhere to it. And a lot of people do that with their pork butts, too. Yeah. Sometimes I do, or sometimes I'll just season that and let it sit for about 30 minutes till it kind of starts sweating a little bit. Oh, my and gosh. And it adheres to it. The flavor of that pork, though, is so mild. Yeah. yeah isn't you that know? nice? It is, it is a beautiful, just, just quality of meat. It's sort of got a little bit of like a pork belly vibe going to it. You know, a little bit, yeah. Because it's got like the fat in there, it's got but that it's not as, fat in there, yeah. sometimes pork yep. belly can get real mushy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that doesn't, can, what's happening with this chili? Are we trying this? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah we can try this. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Let's just bring this whole thing over Don't because I know, that, I know that you wanted some of that, that yeah, cornbread I mean, too. Ben was dishing into the cornbread Yeah, yeah, yeah during the commercial break, I just kind of went right into the cornbread. All right, we're going to go bacon in the cornbread? Yeah. Bacon, there's cilantro, onion, there's okay. you, goodies you in get there. A, you get after it. Grilled whatever. corn. Charlie, this is this is awesome. Go That's ahead and sure. try that chili. No, the, this is incredible. Look at all the different options you guys can do with mm. this one cut of meat. So we did put this recipe on our on our website, oh twinsieslive.com, you Ooh, guys. It's <laughs> smoky and delicious. I love Pork Week. It's a really great time of year. It should be a national holiday, in my opinion. It's going to continue tomorrow. Chef John Van House is going to show us how to make seared pork with a mushroom vinaigrette. Oh my gosh, you're all about the mushrooms. I'm in a Have real, you ever done a vinaigrette? Uh, no, but I'm in a real mushroom vibe the last year. 2023 yeah. is since I've known since I've known it's you. It's been the year of the mushroom. <laughs> Appropriate mushrooms, guys. Take it easy. Yeah.